Yes, you should be good. <laughs>
but as well begin to work within the policy community for the kinds of questions that they might have about what does the research on initial teacher preparation and literacy suggest about practice. Um, I think that's the first page in terms of that. We're starting, um, we're starting in, right now our stand is 2001 to 2015. Uh, those are the studies, that's the range of the span of studies that we've identified so far. Our goal will be that every year moving forward, we'll expand one year as instruction, so we'll keep trying to be contemporary with the work that's ongoing, but also be being dropping, dropping back historically uh, to add pieces that we may have missed by not going back far enough. Um, that's enough of the background to start. And so what we're going to do is have... Do you want to wait a second to see if people have questions about that? Uh, what do you say? Do they say anything? Uh, Other than they ask about what else? You're just asking me questions about what you said. Okay. But, you know, these people are trying to get to check it out. In any case, people should know. They can ask questions. Sure. We're looking, in fact, we're looking forward to it. So, um, so interactive around the documents uh, and interactive around the messages that, that you of course sing along with. So if you'll go to, um, we're going to go to the website itself, so you're not going to have to look at us any longer. Um, and what Melissa's going to do is to show you the pages of the website as we're interacting and you get a sense of I, I want to say a sense of what it's going to look like, but I think what you're looking at, I don't know this language very well with this, but we haven't fully designed the front end of the, of, of the, the site yet, and that is what the user will come to see. Um, that That's in our development plan, and hopefully that's going to be ready by LRA. So mostly what you're going to be seeing is sort of the back end, that's kind of the working end that we're doing inside the site. Um, and it'll be some combination of those as, as, as we go forward. So. If we could switch over, can you do that? Great, can you switch over to Melissa's computer so we can see the screen? Let's see how that's going to look. Will we see that here? Or... Yeah, so right now, what uh, the users are looking at the screen, um, and if you click on Randy, if, uh, if you click, there's three bars in the bottom, you can click on me, Randy, or Melissa. If you just click on Melissa, you'll see it. But the users right now are seeing uh, Melissa's screen. So, so this is what, some version of what will be seen uh, as a user coming to site. Um, and those of you who are closer, um, this is the, the basically the welcome page. So Melissa has this up on the welcome, uh, welcome page. I think I did the acronym, right? So it's Critical Interactive Teacher uh, uh, Transparent. So what we want to do throughout this literature review is to show everyone what we're doing. So it's fully available in terms of what studies we're doing, how we're moving from our syntheses, how we're moving from the database into our syntheses and all of that. Um, and transparent, we talked about that, evolving means it's going to keep changing, uh, both in terms of the features as well as the, the studies themselves that are included, as well as the syntheses we'll talk about. The ITEL is the uh, Initial Teacher Education and Literacy. Uh, one of the ways, sort of in the big vision that we think about, is that there might be other sites uh, that, uh, that use these same features and the same, the same sort of architecture uh, for doing synthesis research around other areas. So, processing these uh, teacher education, teacher development at the end service level. Basically, it, anything could be adapted to the system as we say. So um, if you're looking at the slide on down, this is basically the information that was in the handout in the uh, document that was sent to you that was marked as number one. Um, and it basically, slide on down, Melissa, goes through um, the process. the process that we've used, the open access that, we, that we're using. Uh, I should mention that we're collaborating with LRA on this. Uh, so LRA has become the partner of our project. Uh, eventually what we're seeing is that this, this entire site link will go through the LRA listserv so that someone who comes to LRA can go to the list group through that. Um, our notion would be, and this is ultimately going to be a decision in LRA, if members, it may be restricted to members, uh, access to the interactive features of site, 
Um, and maybe other people can simply, if they want to visit site and just see what's on site, they can do that, but they won't be able to interact with the system. So that's something that LRA is going to be deciding, but it will be linked to the LRA website. Is that the bottom of that? Okay. So if we go to the team, um, this is kind of who we are, and uh, it's, it's, it's a combination of people, mostly a, a group of us here at the University of Texas that you just met. Um, and a lot of the graduate students in our language and literacy program are sort of the core team that have been doing this initial work. Um, and you'll see there Michelle Fowler Romano, who I know is online, but is not, <laughs> is not interacting with us because she doesn't have the voice uh, connection that we have. She is one of our graduates of our program who graduated last two years ago, two years ago. Um, and what's happening is our graduate students are staying with us in the project uh, so that you'll see continuing collaborators down there, which are graduate students who are now not at the University of Texas but are working elsewhere, but still very involved in the project. Um, there, see, there you'll see Lucas and Greg who are working us with technology. And then you're going to see a list of our current graduate students, some of whom are looking for jobs. We'll put that, <laughs> we'll put that little plug in there. Uh, but these are doctoral students, both in EdSight and curriculum construction, um, that are working with the project. And you'll see sort of what the role that they've been playing in building this, uh, building this effort. Um, and then you'll see that that's our association with the LRA. So Laura Hansfield and Jude Dysecker are the two co-chairs of the, I think they're still co-chairs, of the research committee for LRA. And they've been interacting with us throughout and are part of this process. Um, and we're trying to closely closely in links with what, what is happening with LRA and our work here. And then you'll find, hopefully, somewhere along here, your name. Um, and these are almost 100 members of our editorial advisory board. Um, and we were excited at the response and particularly excited at the range of folks and their careers and what they're doing, uh, ranging from, I even added Jerry Duffy down there at the bottom, and he's, he, he may be our most senior board member, um, but there's probably five or six or seven ex-president, former presidents of LRA, board members of LRA, IRA people, and graduate students, and uh, we're really excited to see the range of both people in the U.S. and also some international people, although we'd certainly like to see more international folks as we can add them, in particular because, in particular because we're finding so much research that's happening outside the U.S., and that's been quite an exciting part of our uh, See our but I don't see yeah. the on that. Right. So, um, if you see something that, that needs to be corrected, please let me know. Uh, it's not us now in terms of this as well. Uh, and one of the things we're going to be talking about today is the role of the editorial board, uh, the kinds of opportunities, and um, that you'll have to be part of this site ITL community moving forward. So we'll get to some detail uh, in terms of what that's like. Um, we can yeah, I, have, I just got a message oh, here. And we'll has no sound. And Wolf. And Wolf has no sound. I don't know, Greg, if you can help out, because maybe that's something that Greg can respond to directly, because I don't know if other if, if no one has sound. No, I'm assuming it's just Greg is asking if she tried turning the volume up. Try turning the volume up. But she can't hear us, so I guess we're <laughs> 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 I'll just switch down just because it's in the order on news. Um, and well, this will be a continuous place where people can go to put those updates. And one of the things we definitely want to invite you to is the, um, the meeting at LRA that we're scheduled on Friday, December 10th, 2nd. Um, by that time, we are committed to have this site ready to be interactive. We, ideally, in this session right now, we would have you signed on to the site yourself, but Lucas start shaking every time, every time I mention that as a possibility because we're not sure it's quite ready for that yet. So we're doing this kind of display. But, but by LRA, we'll have that, and we're going to do an information session in which we'll break out and look at the synthesis work that we've been doing. And then the next thing is the orientation session that we're doing right now. So our entry into this literature, if you'll slip down to journals, uh, and I should have said somewhere on one of these documents, that, and, and Randy keeps reminding me of this, that, that we're building the ship as we're going <laughs> along the way. Um, there's nothing, we're not modeling ourselves after anything that we know exists. I mean, there are definitely things like um, what works, kinds of sites in which literature is synthesized. 
but we don't know what any site is doing. What we're trying to do with this research site in terms of making it interactive, ongoing, all the kinds of features that we're adding. So, so it's quite unique. We're building as it we're going, and, and it leaks in lots of different places. Um, but, but so far, we've been pretty good at being able to fix those leaks. Um, and also be responsive to opportunities that we're seeing, new things that we're adding to functionalities in the site um, that are going to be, you know, are sort of springing up along the way as well. So we look forward to, along the way to any suggestions that you might have for uh, for the site as well. So our path into the literature has been through journals. Um, Before you continue, oh. um, I just want to know whether everyone who's listening to us can see the full screen because one person is having some problems and the chat that we're having is going right in front of what we're trying to explain. Uh, and I just want to make sure that that has now been solved or if anyone has On it. my screen, the chat is on the right and the screen is at the top. Right, on, and on mine, I only have the chat. And you have the screen. Yeah, your screens will be slightly different than what the viewers see if you're on the Hangouts view. Um, if they are on, and I apologize for my feedback, if they're on the literacy research page, they will see they have the they have these a slide deck up top, and then they have the embedded video that they can hit play. And if they're if they're caught up in the actual live part of our video, they'll be seeing the same exact thing that we are seeing right now. If that helps, sorry. If that, I hope I didn't confuse anybody. Okay. So, uh, Melissa's idea is maybe you want to try a different browser if you're only seeing part of the screen, part of what's being projected on the screen, um, uh, and there may be other settings to try on your particular browser. Greg, just so you know, when you talk. It seems like maybe um, your com your computer is feeding back, so you kind of go in and out in response to the microphone, trying to adjust to the volume of your own computer. So uh, maybe if you mute your computer, mute your speaker when you speak, uh, uh, that. Do I come out clear this time? You're going to have to just nod or type. I have muted. For journals, that's been our pathway uh, into the literature. And the way we did that was by starting with the review uh, that Risco Roller and a bunch of folks did that back in 2001, or that's our 2008. Um, we took that literature review that appeared in the quarterly, um, and we used the bibliography in that review as a place to identify an initial set of journals that we would go to that were obviously places where research on literacy teacher preparation has been, has been published. Uh, and so by going to those journals, we would know that those would be good places for us to be in. Uh, we started looking at, uh, we, our, our initial step back was from 2011 to 2014, uh, and then we started stretching further and further back in terms of the journals that we've identified. Uh, what we did, what we've done is to set it up so that as we are looking in the journal, so if we identify a particular journal, let's say Action and Teacher Education, uh, that had published a particular article, that journal then was searched from 2011 up to 2014 or 15, and then we've gone back to 2001, so we've searched that journal all the way through. And every time we found an article in that journal that was published and related to the, our focus, that article was added to the database, and the journal that that article appeared to was also nominated in for journal links. They're saying that in a way that sort of makes sense. So, so basically, we're accumulating journals uh, throughout. Melissa's just flipped, oh, I think I should say that term, teacher education. Um, maybe we planned that. Um, <laughs> If you look here, this is a journal page, so this is actually like, for an example, of a page that exists on, on, on 
sites. Uh, you can see there that up on the very right hand side it says 85 items. So basically so far inside of our literature database search, we've identified 85 different journals that are publishing articles that relate to teacher education and teacher education. Right? And if you'll look there at many You'll click on action and teacher education. Okay. I, I, I will, but one second, Melissa. That's okay. Uh, so if we go to, well, I just wanted to point out that there's groups that maybe that information, the years completed, date that it was added, the number of articles. So if you look over at the right there, 35 articles have been identified in action and teacher education over the span of 2003 to 2015. If you click on the journal, uh, that will, the group is basically the group that was responsible. Our groups are brilliantly organized by letters of the alphabet. So, so Randy gets assigned every journal through A through D, and we, we, we try to spread those out in some way. But if you'll go on down, what you'll see uh, further down is that that actually loads up the full list of articles um, that have been published in each year. So, so I guess that would be a sense of what's happening inside each of these journals. And this, we eventually can generate, and you can probably generate fairly quickly, a list of the journals, all of the different articles that have been published in those journals by year uh, that would show the places that actually sort of value and, and extend our, 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 our base, our research base uh, for our practice and teaching preparation. Um, so that's something you could go in and look at in the article. So every time we add an article, gets added to this page uh, for journals. Um, we are doing entirely hand searches, uh, almost entirely using hand searches. I know that sounds like an antiquated way to do uh, literature searches, uh, but I think part of Nancy Bozich's work a while back was, I think a lot of us are aware that doing these search term searches on EBSCO and other places is really hit and miss in terms of what you, what you get and what you don't get. Um, and so we basically have found that the hands-on search doesn't involve us necessarily going over to the library as we used to do, but rather all of these journals are, are online, and we can do the searching online in each of the journal volumes and issues, um, and that's been quite efficient for us. Now, one of the things we do do, as you'll see when we go back to the synthesis stage, is we do go back and sort of do a, back, a backwards check uh, using search terms and some other databases to see if we have missed anything uh, that might be important and again that gets added into the system. Does that open no up questions? All plans? No? Okay. Let's go down to uh, let's go down to articles, I guess. Or just click on one of these articles. We should do that. That that would be another way to get there. Yeah. Um, so we could we could go directly to an article and that would give us um, so what we've done is, is um, we, we try to build in as much cross-checking as we can in the literature search. So you're looking now at an article page. Um, if you came directly to the article page, you could search for an article by, by article title and you could take it to the article. Um, you can go to that in the way that we get to the general um, reference as well. Um, and then this kind of initial phase, so this article has been identified by someone who was searching that journal. And starts out the record of the article. And it goes all the way down to the reference. Let's slide them down a little bit more. So the year it was published, gives the abstract, um, and where abstracts appear, what they don't appear, we don't include that abstract. Uh, we also include the PDF of the file itself. That's somewhat is a bit problematic. It's, it's good for us because when we're doing our work, we can go directly to those PDFs. When we finally get to displaying the website, um, I don't think we can include access to those PDFs themselves, but there will be another. Great, thanks. It's somewhat, you mean illegal. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why we can't somewhat make it public, illegal. but we can do it in UT. Uh, and we try to put, you know, where we can, the DOI and other sources where people can actually get to the article themselves. Um, that's actually where the article, initial article sort of nomination starts. So if somebody has looked at that article and took this one, it's our criteria. Um, and then within our working groups, that means at that point it's stopped. And then someone else is assigned to come to that article to do a review of it as well to see if does it meet the basic criteria. There's some sort of agreement with this. And you see that it says, does it meet the basic criteria? 
confirm or disconfirm. That means now we're good to go. And if it's a confirm, then the rest of the analysis of the article is done at that point. If it's a disconfirm, that means we've got two people look at it with a different idea on whether it's confirmed or not. It goes to an arbitrator, which is our little research team chiefs, and they'll come back and confirm or disconfirm or unconfirm the disconfirm. Basically, we the, the group leader has the final say as to whether something fits in or not. And I think, as a general rule, we try to be generous. We try to be as inclusive as possible in giving as many things as we can. Um, if you'll just slide down, this has been this is an interesting part of our work and part of one of our uh, the, the parts of the project that Hello? we're continuing to think about. Hey. We're trying to as much as possible to be true. No, I'm still working. I'm just uh, finishing up. Choices that people have made. Um, oh, no, I didn't make a carbon in my guy report because I wanted to be caught in the screen just to check my computer. Okay, so you said you didn't make a carbon report today. So you can see back there that we've got a All right. I'll give you a call a little bit. Everywhere around the world, but sometimes it's in Eastern, you know, Appalachia, sometimes it's, you know, it's, so we try to hold on to that language. Eventually, we may do some collapsing of these kinds of things. Um, so that there will be more collapse categories. But for right now, it's pretty much stayed true uh, to this terminology that we're, uh, that we're using. So you can see research locations and contexts. Um, and so, for example, if we see a research location or context that's not been mentioned, we can add that to the list. Uh, so everything sort of gets uh, accumulated. Keeps finding those uh, pre service sample size, duration of data collection. Data sources, uh, and this is a huge range of things, both both broad in, in the ways in which people are gathering data, but also broad in the ways, different ways in which people may use it. And on the analysis, data analysis tools, uh, so that's kind of the data technology part. Um, research position. Now, this has actually been quite important as we're looking at our work uh, in terms of. We're seeing a lot of, of, of activity with uh, teacher educators studying their own practices, studying their own students, so sort of that insider perspective, um, as opposed to, or, or possibly a combination of inside-outside kind of perspectives, as well as full outside perspectives. The research questions uh, are the sort of core here. So the research questions, we try again to stay as close to, to the language of the author in terms of the research questions. and. We can expand this list of questions that have been asked. Um, and that looks like it had was two research questions. Uh, two research questions. And then, what should, then, after we do the research questions, then we begin to name the findings that came from that particular study. So, so there's the research questions and then the findings. And that, and that the, findings the findings have been um, sometimes very slippery to try to name because it's a little bit of uh, studies that have been more exploratory don't pop out little um, little lessons for young and old alike the way uh, the way some others do. So um, so sometimes so really what we figured out was we didn't have to be able to state the findings in a sentence. What we had to be able to do was put put something there so that we could attach it to one of our categories. So really that we realized that the question was does this find do we have enough of a finding to get this into a bucket? And in fact, so if you click on that um, finding, it's going to take us to a finding page in which that clip of the finding will actually be talked about, sort of in the full sense of talk about explicit, not explicit. Um, and then, then if you look down, it's what we do is we connect each of those findings from the study to a category. Um, and categories are things that we created. After about six months of work, so we, we basically worked about six months just collecting studies and collecting findings. Um, then we had a retreat, um, and we sat down, and Beth guided us in this process. She's pretty far away from the, 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 the microphone, but maybe she'll speak now when we do this. We, we basically got together as a large group and took all of these findings, which was in the hundreds of findings across studies. And what did we do? What did we, get? What did we call it? Well, we just tried to start putting them in buckets, in conceptual buckets, and um, what we found was everybody called things different. You know, there were 
just all over the place. And so uh, after rounds and rounds of discussion, we started putting them in, into clusters, I guess, um, and then grouping them in larger buckets. We, we ended up with quite an array of categories and subcategories. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, did you go kind of an overview of us on categories? Uh, there's a chart. So, so <laughs> these are the the, um, the sort of seven basic areas. Uh, that is, in these studies, do these findings relate to the teacher educators, or do they relate to the pre-service teacher educators? And if it happened that they related to both, they would get checked and linked to both of those categories. Uh, coursework is something that comes up a lot. Field work, program structure and organization, program effects upon and into teaching. That's a very small set of studies. Uh, content or process findings related to a focus for research. Um, so what we did, if you'll look on that, and this is on your handout as well, um, we basically ended up with sort of a decision tree in terms of looking at a finding and deciding along the path of where, what does the, who does the finding relate to? What context does it find work in? That's important to the study. Are there outcome variables? And then what topic does the finding relate to? And this is important. So that's area seven. If you slide up a little bit, just a little bit, Melissa. Those are the, the these are the topical areas that seem to appear again and again inside of these studies. So, so we have a set of studies that keep coming around this topic of adolescent literacy, assessment, children's literature, critical literacy. Um, Absolutely. Just that it's the intersection of this topic and teacher education. Absolutely. So I just initial pre service to, teacher education. Right. right. So it's initial pre service teacher education in the area of adolescent literacy. Initial to pre service teacher education in content area literacy. Exactly. So we should have that. Yeah, that's the, the, the stem that leads all of those. Um, and in, in our linking, particular finding can link in a lot of different places. And again, our, our process has always been generous. That is, if you think it relates to children's literature, or even the, or if you think it connects to what we're going to know is going to talk about just responsive pedagogy, the culturally responsive pedagogy, but they don't use that exact term, go ahead and link it. Well, right now, just go ahead and link it to that category, or to that topic. Open that right? Any questions? There's a small line on the video feed. Don't find it. Okay. I don't mind. I'm just so fast. <laughs> I'm no, slower. I'm slower. Let's go to categories. Because that's real. Sometimes we think about, um, when we think about the site and what people are going to be most interested in, uh, aside from looking to see if their work has been included, which is very important. And by the way, if you've done studies that you don't see here, uh, that, are in, that seem to fit everything that we're talking about, let us know. Uh, when the site is interactive, there'll be a way to do that. And I'll show you that in just a second. Uh, so if you look at these topics, uh, what, let's go ahead and let's, we'll use, can we do tutoring as an example? Yeah, let's go to tutoring because that's one that's worth a little further along. Um, so if you click on tutoring, um, what that's going to tell you is these are all the attached findings that have been connected to this tutoring literature. Now, as Randy said, this this language within these findings has not been very helpful, right? So often we just close that section because the section of findings actually served its function of getting that article into this topical area where the research is, where the research synthesis should happen. So in this particular case, you can see that as you go to a topic, it will take you to all of the different studies that have have something to say about tutoring. Uh, in pre service teacher education programs. And I don't see the number there, but I think it's 38 studies, something like that, uh, that we've identified so far. No, on this page. No, on this page. We, we, Lucas is taking notes. <laughs> Whereas we look at features like that and think about the interactive qualities of that. So, so that's the way we move them to get all of the studies nested inside of these various topics. Now, one thing we want to say is that these topical areas, as we said, they leak. Um, and they're also, 
we expect will be expanded, right? So, so just because we have that set of topic areas right now doesn't mean there won't be additional topic areas that we need to explore and expand. Um, let me think of what else. Have we been, so, so I'm hoping that gets you to the place of articles attached to topics. And then let's go down to synthesis, right? Okay, so syntheses are the place where, where we come in and take all of those articles and, and look at them from that kind of critical, what does this have to say? What is, it, what is this literature about? What are the studies about? And what, how do they inform practices inside of teacher preparation? Or perhaps what, what things have been studied and, and in part what things haven't been studied or what questions haven't been studied. So, so what we're going to what we what we're going to try to create are uh, synthesis statements that invite dialogue. We don't see them as sort of definitive closing out to the discussion around these, but it's rather a place where we can have a dialogue around two of the science and teacher education programs and what the research studies have suggested. About them. Uh, there is a little cleaning up phase that we do here, so that is once we once someone has taken on tutoring as something they're going to do a synthesis in. We have to go back and look and make sure all of the studies. So sometimes there's some going back and unmaking some studies that have been put in there. Sometimes we uh, sometimes we may go out and recognize that there are additional studies that have been done that have not made it into the system. We need to go back and insert those articles, and those are added into the system. Melissa, can we go and show? Um, yeah, we have the one example. So. So obviously, this is this is where we we're getting up to where we are right now, um, and we're going to talk for just a second because each of us is taking the lead on some of these topical areas. But we're a little bit further along in terms of the tutoring one. Uh, so eventually, what we're going to have is a, a set of sort of narratives around that tutoring literature. So in this case, right now we're working toward this organizational structure that has an overview of the area. Um, and sort of how that area is defined, and that's going to be interesting in some of our more messier kind of areas, but it's also interesting as you look at tutoring that we found very few studies of tutoring that actually sort of get into the sort of definition of what does it mean to be tutoring, um, and we have some sort of standard notions, but we have some interesting extensions of that. If you slide on down, Melissa, beyond the overview. Um, let's, so let's just pause okay. for one second, because Greg's saying, because this is showing what we see when we put things in and not what they would see when they look at it. He has, he's, he's yeah, take the permalink up top, um, which would be the, you know, it's like a post preview. Copy that into a new browser window and um, post that so people can see the live view. The live view. Oh, I guess you can't yet. Yeah, I guess you can't yet. Okay. The front end is not built yet. Oh, I see. Uh, but this is what someone would, they would, they would come to someone. Um, yeah, I'm just saying this is our data entry page, not the page where it shows the Here. Are we still on the, we're on the second one, area focus? Yeah, so, so what we said here was that this particular synthesis sort of lumped into four areas in terms of the ways in which people were focusing the research on, on tutoring. Uh, some of those focused on outcomes, some of them focused on the structure of the design of the tutorial, some on pre-service teacher learning outcomes long term rather than short term, and then a look at mediating factors and and then finally sort of stupid learning outcomes where they that. And so then we usually create a chart that's a little bit further down. Well, that talks about each of those four areas and sort of synthesizes that. Um, then the tutoring graphs, if we just take a look at. It's not actually in the site yet. It's just a, so it just downloaded it. Oh, it downloaded it? Yeah. Basically, these are graphics. So in these graphics, you will see things like. 
uh, the, the studies published over a particular span of years, how many studies were published from 2001 through 2015, uh, and sort of, and it also identify the journals that have been publishing the tutoring research. It identifies, uh, we've got a chart in there on inside or outside of perspectives. So we'll try to begin to create these graphics that will sort of represent that literature broadly. Um, and we'll be displaying those entire inside of what you see. Is it moving, is it moving forward? It's just sharing the yeah. browser, not, uh, not the whole yeah. So the, the last part there is the summary moving forward, and this is the sort of so what kind of statement that comes around to literature review of this area. Uh, raises questions, points out where we seem to be having some consensus, areas where there seems to be differences or more study, more work needed. And then on the very bottom of that page uh, is going to come uh, comments. So this is just the beginning of what it's going to look like in terms of that that space for us to interact around this synthesis. Uh, so people can come in and say, well, there's three chapters here. Uh, Jan Richards has this book on tutoring. So different people could come and suggest additional resources that people might want to go to. They might identify additional studies. They might question some of the interpretations. And our goal would be to make that interactive with us and within the community. So, tutoring is pretty far along. Can we talk? Where were this? Is this a couple of seconds talking about some of the other articles? Yeah, we could talk about article tags. Is it right there? Okay, let's do that. So, article tags is, is something new that we're adding to the system. Um, and this came out of a result of we're seeing patterns in the studies that we're looking at. It's, it's, it has an upload. Um, we're seeing patterns inside the, st the studies that are not being captured by are topical areas. So for, let me give an example that many people can with, and that is communities of practice. That shows up again and again and again inside of our studies. So what we're doing as we're entering studies now is we're beginning to create this uh, yes, tag list. Make a point. Uh, and the tag list will be of common words that are that may will, will be inclusive of our topical areas, but may reach outside of our topical areas as well. So that tag list will actually be searchable as well. So if you would say, well, I'm really interested in I'm writing about it, about it, about using it as a framework in their research, you can go to this tag page, click on the Communities of Practice, and it will pull up all of the articles right, that have been tagged with that particular uh, So potentially, that might become a topical area that someone would want to take up into a synthesis and move into science. That a user, just somebody in the world, not one of us necessarily. Any user might decide to write the uh, 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 one of the similar kind of lit review on community practices and education. And one of the things that we said in the and we'll then, as I'm looking at the plot, uh, one of the things that we've been saying is that that is potentially one sort of evolving goal for the editorial board. That the editorial board, we're going to ask you as we move forward a couple of things. One of those is going to be to review to actually do a review of these sentences before they get. Uh, so, kind of a traditional journal sort of a, uh, editorial board review, and we'll revise based on that, and we're not going to put anything up there that hasn't passed uh, that review process. Um, but we're also seeing the, the potential for the board also being involved in the interactive work around these areas, so board members may choose a couple of the topical areas that they're interested in and to stay active in both commenting and responding to comments that are part of the site system. But also eventually moving to a point where a board member may say, you know, that particular topical area has not been synthesized yet. I have a group that would like to do that. Uh, and what we would do is we're trying to build that process where you can interact with the system as well and begin to contribute these authored uh, synthesis statements around either the topical areas that exist or maybe one of our tag areas that needs to be expanded. Can I ask you a quick question? How would you handle... Um people who are going at their literature review from a specific theoretical perspective, like they want to look at tutoring, but they only want to take a, you know, an activity theory lens or something where somebody else might want to look at it from a different way, which obviously would influence their conclusions. How could we handle multiple perspectives around different reviews? A tag. I mean, activity theory could be a tag. Uh, and if somebody, um, uh, I mean, users will either be able to, we, don't, we haven't figured out exactly what, the, as we said, what the front end looks like, but users could tag or could 
uh, a right to us and, and a request or suggest. Wow, that sounds awesome. Thanks. So that's, that tag is really going to be an important place for people suggesting additional tags for audience. And other cuts through the literature. And um, a, a, another thing that's, that's, uh, uh, that, that, that we should say, when we were just looking at sort of scrolling through that text of the, uh, uh, the, the sort of lit review about tutoring, uh, we went through focus area one, focus area two, focus area three. But those are going to be in the individual pages that will be hyperlinked together. So these we're trying to figure out how to make the text a hypertext enough so that there are different pathways of navigation across these categories uh, uh, and uh, the, the, you know that open up the text in the way that hypertext can do. So we're so we're you know we're we're trying to figure out how to fragment it. So it's not like you're downloading a PDF of a traditional print, print culture lit review, but it uh, but it is more of a, a digital type. Of and these syntheses will be updated every, hopefully every year. As new studies get added going forward and back, they'll be updated and the comments will be incorporated into the revised syntheses. We'll archive the old syntheses so that they're still there and available. But, but these will keep changing as the literature goes. Now, we picked tutoring, but for LRA, um, we've identified several areas that by LRA we want to be ready to present around. And some of them have been a little more straightforward than others. I know Melissa is stuck. Melissa, do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, I can talk about mine. So my area is cultural, culturally responsive um, instruction or pedagogy and pre-service teacher preparation. And it intersects in um, pretty significant ways with other groups of studies like working with students of color, teaching for social justice, um, and beliefs, pre-service teacher beliefs. So right now, what my group is trying to do is to decide which articles um, to include in that group. Um, because what we're, what we're running into is that um, somebody may use the words culturally responsive pedagogy or use one of the theorists that we associate strongly with those terms. Um, and so that those pieces go into that bucket, but there might be pieces that um, address very much the same problems of practice and preparing pre-service teachers, but they use uh, Sleater and Grant, you know, who, um, who talk more about teaching for social justice, or they use a multicultural teacher preparation lens. So the question is how, whether to write a synthesis, whether culturally responsive instruction is the thing to write a synthesis about, or whether the thing to write a synthesis about is actually preparing teachers to work with students in linguistically and culturally diverse contexts in responsive ways, or something like that. So it points us back to, you know, every time we put something into a category or a bucket, we're making a choice about what to include or exclude, exclude. and at different points around, along the way, we're finding we need to stop and ask whether those were the right um, words to choose to describe this group of things that we're talking about. So it's been kind of fun to, to read through and to wrestle, through, wrestle with these different terms that different people use and to really get a handle on what it is that we're wondering about these sort of teacher education, and that is this idea of preparing teachers in responsive ways. Yeah, Randy? Well, I, so I'm working on the one, the category, the topics that, that is entitled dialogic or discussion approaches. And so the ones that were put in this bucket, um, in theory, were <laughs> the studies that um, intent, focus on um, how to facilitate discussion once you're in out of the classroom. So teacher ed programs that take as a focus discussion-based approaches. And there were, I think we started with like 26 articles that were attached to that um, category. And when we actually looked at them, we ended up disconnecting two-thirds of them uh, because there were many studies that use dialogic approaches inside teacher education settings, but that's not really what they were focused on teaching about. Um, and then we, we ended up with eight, I think maybe nine studies that really focused on, these are, these are programs or courses that really focus on what does it mean to um, teach someone about discussion and facilitating discussion. So what's surprising to me about that is how little there is, actually, that focuses on that at the teacher ed level, and almost exclusively um, secondary settings. Okay. 
Um, so I, I, I'm working with a group on uh, on research, teacher, research and teacher education for writing, and uh, and uh, a couple of interesting things that have come up about that. Uh, some people may be aware of the lit review that Denise Morgan and colleagues wrote um, a, a few years ago, and so we really leaned on that uh, that lit review to, to make sure that the things that we had identified in the site database were all uh, all the stuff that Denise and, and, and her colleagues had found that we had included all of those things. Most of them we had. We had some that they, they hadn't found, um, but there were things that we needed to add uh, to our to our database. Um, so that was that, that was one um, a, a interesting thing was how to how to incorporate the work of a lit review that has happened recently within the uh, review period that we're dealing with. Um, and then, uh, of course, there are like in all of these categories, there are categorical issues, things that should we ask, should this be in this category? Not all the writing is much more straightforward than something like dialogue or cultural responsive uh, uh, instruction. Um, and um, uh, as you, as you, I mean, it's not not surprisingly what we what we a lot of what we have are people working on uh, 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 teacher ed students' conceptions of what writing is and their attitudes toward writing. That's a whole lot of the um, uh, of the literature on teacher ed and writing. Which really sort of points to, points to the field noticing that people, by the time they arrive at teacher education, have a bad attitude toward writing and a um, and misconceptions about writing that they want to address. And so there's kind of an implicit uh, finding across those studies that there's a, a, a critique that the field makes of how writing has been uh, built as a concept in, in people's lives as they move through 17 years of schooling. It's weird that you get to uh, that you get to the senior year in college and. And people think they have to teach them how to write. Starting that um, uh, when they've had 17 years of writing, uh, writing work. So, so there's a, so, but that's not the finding of any particular study. That's sort of like underneath the assumptions of the whole of a large chunk, chunk of the field that's been uh, undertaking these studies. And this is really a discussion too. That's um, yeah, a lot of the findings related to what their experiences have been, the kind of understandings about discussion in all the classrooms, and and, and, and sort of. Teaching through that, or disrupting that, or yeah, that's so it's the it's the, interesting thing it's, a, it's the teacher ed form reform. Mary Kennedy talks about teacher ed form reform agendas in literacy education, where the where, where literacy educators, literacy teacher educators, don't think it's been done right in the school, and so have to teach people how to do it right in the future, but teach people who haven't had those experiences in school to do it differently. I mean, that's a lot of teacher education math. math, math other areas as well, but it's uh, it's a, it's an interesting thing to, to sort of find beneath the surface of a lot of, of these things. Can you have a pretty large data set? It's about forty, uh, uh, about forty studies. We found a few more lately uh, from the from the studies we have. We, we've had to add some, so we've got some. Uh, it's gone down with some we just confirmed, and then back up. So it's a little over forty. And so Diane, Diane's working on the reading process. Um, we have. No, I don't have to say much because I haven't done much, okay. but it is probably the most um, straightforward, uh, standard kind of um, area because, and there are quite a few articles on how to teach the basic processes of reading. So uh, we're, we're looking at vocabulary, uh, and awareness. The basic processes of reading, yeah. how to teach future teachers, how to teach those things. So. And we have several people that are offsite. We have a few, uh, one who's doing a uh, one group that's doing a synthesis on drama research, drama and increasing drama and literacy. Uh, teacher preparation. We've got another group that's working in secondary and uh, that's split to uh, one. Uh, they they split. This is Michelle Fowler Mato is 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 the this group. They split um, into an English education. Uh, 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 Strand and an adolescent literacy strand as a, a as a separate thing. And there, of course, is, is literacy and content areas uh, separate from those adolescent literacy and sort of understanding the literacies in adolescents' lives, um, uh, the English education, how to teach them English, how to do literacy work in teachers with English. And there's a group working on learning disabilities and preparing teachers to work with students who have been identified with learning disabilities as well. So. So those are kind of our active groups that are working on this synthesis, and our target is for LRA to have had those both completed, out to the editorial board for review, revised, and then put up onto the system, and that LRA session 
we feel like we'll have the system pretty much up and ready to go um, and, and ready to be interactive uh, and beginning to engage those features that really are the most exciting part of uh, the work we're doing. So I think, um, what else we I do have sort of going forward questions, but we've only got one minute left. Um, so possible for your roles in terms of editorial board members um, will certainly be to review these pieces. So that, that that's a process that we're going to begin to initiate. And you may be hearing from us soon as these first drafts get developed uh, to help us with that review process. Uh, we are eventually going to ask you to get involved in terms of the active features of site as well. And then ultimately down the line, our, our hope would be that you begin to think about ways in which you could take on and begin to do some, some of these synthesis work as well. Um, that's still to be sort of figured out how we'll do that, but we think, again, that's expanding the community uh, inside this way of thinking about literature reviews that are dynamic. Um, as most of you have done literature reviews and you've published them, and they're already old when they get published, and, and we never get to sort of continue to use them in ways that uh, will be valuable for the field. And valuable for, for you know all of the kind of policy sort of swirls that go on around us in teacher populations. Okay. We get most of our goals to do that. We sure asked we, if they had any questions, and I don't see any. No questions. That's not a good sign. Thanks. Also, if people have um, suggestions for the front end of the site. So as you're thinking about it, being a user, if you have suggestions for what kinds of things or pathways of access you would like to see in the front end, that's something that we will be just thinking as we go forward. Although I'm, it must be a little hard to respond back when you don't have anything to see yet, but, um, but, but once your mind starts spinning this way, right, you can start to see where you might want certain kinds of features, and that, and and surely once we have it set up, and you give us feedback in the early months and the first year or so, it will be easy to change it without causing everyone to go through culture shifts and get all angry because the site has changed. Um, but that's what we're finding. I kind of think to surprise us, just uh, in closing, uh, just the idea of um, the number of international studies that we have, and the number of studies that I, I, I'm really amazed at that. I'm amazed at the number of different journals that are publishing um, literacy research, and a little amazed at some of our leading journals in the field of reading, particularly, are sorely absent <laughs> in terms of the representation of a lot of the um, literacy teaching research. Uh, so, so I think that's going to be basically the group that was responsible. Our groups are brilliantly organized by letters of the alphabet. So, so Randy gets assigned every journal through A through D, and we, we, we try to spread those out in some way. But if you'll go on down, what you'll see uh, further down is that that actually loads up the full list of articles um, that have been published in each year. So, so I guess that'll give you a sense of what's happening inside each of the journals. And this, we eventually can generate fairly quickly a list of the journals, all of the different articles that have been published in those journals by year uh, that would show the places that actually sort of value and, and extend our, 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 our base, our research base uh, for our practice and teaching preparation. Um, so that's something you could go in and look at in any particular article. So every time we add an article, it gets added to this page uh, for journals. Um, we are doing entirely hand searches, uh, almost entirely using hand searches. I know that sounds like an antiquated way to do uh, literature searches, uh, but I think part of Nancy Bozich's work a while back was, I think a lot of us are aware that doing these search term searches on EBSCO and other places is really hit and miss in terms of what you, what you get and what you don't get. Um, and so we basically have found that the hands-on search doesn't involve us necessarily going over to the library as we used to do, but rather, all of these journals are, are online, and we can do the searching online in each of the journal volumes and issues, um, and that's been quite efficient for us. Now, one of the things we do do, as you'll see when we go back to the synthesis stage, is we do go back and sort of do a, back, a backwards check uh, using um, search terms and some of the databases. 
to see if we have missed anything uh, that might be important. And again, that gets added to the system. No questions. No? Okay, let's go down to uh, no questions. Let's go down to articles, I guess. Or um, just click on one of these articles. We could do that. That, that would be another way to get there. No. Um, so we could. We could go directly to an article and that would give us what's going on. Um, so what we've done is, is um, we, we try to build in as much cross checking as we can in the literature search. So you're looking now at an article page. Um, if you came directly to the article page, you could search for an article by, by article title and you could take it to the article. Um, you can go into that in the way that we did to the general um, reference as well. Um, and then this kind of initial phase, so this article has been identified by someone who was searching that journal and starts out the record of the article. And it goes all the way down to the reference. Let's slide them down a little bit more. So the year it was published, gives the abstract, um, and where abstracts appear and what they don't appear, we don't include that abstract. Uh, we also include the PDF of the file itself. That's somewhat is a word problematic. It's, it's good for us because when we're doing our work, we can go directly to those PDFs. When we finally get to displaying the website, um, I don't think we can include access to those PDFs themselves. But there will be another. Great, thanks. It's somewhat, you mean, illegal. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's why we can't make it public, but we can do it in UT. Uh, and we try to put, you know, where we can, the DOI and other sources where people can actually get to the document themselves. Um, that's actually where the article, initial article sort of nomination starts. So somebody has looked at that article and said, this one fits our criteria. Um, and then within our working groups, that means at that point it's stopped. And then someone else is assigned to come to that article to do a review of it as well to see if it doesn't meet the basic criteria. There's some sort of agreement with this. And you'll see that it says, does it meet the basic criteria? Confirm or disconfirm. That means, yeah, we're good to go. And if it's confirmed, then the rest of the analysis of the article is done at that point. If it's a disconfirm, that means we've got two people look at it with a different idea on whether it's confirmed or not. It goes to an arbitrator, which is our little research team chiefs, and they'll come back and confirm or disconfirm or unconfirm or disconfirm. Basically, we the, the group leader has the final say as to whether something fits in or not. And I think as a general rule, we try to be generous. We try to be as inclusive as possible in getting as many things as we can. Um, if you'll just slide down, it, this has been this is an interesting part of our work and part of one of our uh, the, the parts of the project that Hello? we're continuing to think about. Hey. We're trying to as much as possible to be true. No, I'm still working. I'm just not finishing up. People have used and the word choices that people have made. Uh, oh no, I did not make a carbon and mic uh, report because I was going to call it to you, excuse me, just, just, just to check my computer tomorrow. So, so you said you didn't even give me a call before 5 today. So you can see back there that we've got that. Alright, I'll give you a call a little bit. Everywhere around the world, but sometimes it's in Eastern, you know, Appalachia, sometimes it's, you know, it's, it's, so when we try to hold on to that language, eventually we may do some collapsing of these kinds of things. Um, so that you don't need more collapsed categories. But for right now, it's pretty much stayed true uh, to this terminology that we're, uh, that we're using. So you can see research locations and contexts. Um, and so, for example, if we see a research location or context that's not been mentioned, we can add that to the list. Uh, so everything sort of gets uh, accumulated. Keeps finding those uh, increase of a sample size, duration of data collection, Data sources, uh, and this is a huge range of things, both both broad in, in the ways in which people are gathering data, but also broad in the ways, different ways in which people may the same thing. And on the analysis, data analysis tools, uh, so that's kind of the data technology part. Um, research position. Now, this has actually been quite important as we're looking at our work uh, in terms of. We're seeing a lot of, of, of activity with uh, teacher educators studying their own practices, studying their own students, so sort of that insider perspective, um, as opposed to, or, or possibly a combination of inside-outside kind of perspectives, as well as full outside perspectives. The research questions uh, are the sort of core here. So the research questions, we try again to stay as close to the language 
of the author in terms of the research questions, and we can expand this list of questions that have been asked. Um, and that looks like it had was it two research questions. Uh, two research questions, and then what? You, then after we do the research questions, then we begin to name the findings that came from that particular study. So, so there's the research questions and then the findings. And I'm not the sure. findings, the findings have been um, sometimes very slippery to try to name because it's a bit, it, 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 uh, studies that have been more exploratory don't pop out little um, little lessons for young and old alike the way uh, the way some others do. So. Um, so sometimes, so really, what we figured out was we didn't have to be able to state the findings in a sentence. What we had to be able to do was put, put something there so that we could attach it to one of our categories. So really, that we realized that the question was: Does this find? Do we have enough of a finding to get this into a bucket? And in fact, so if you click on that, that will take you it's going to take us to a finding page in which that clip of a finding will actually be talked about sort of in the full sense of talk about explicit, not explicit. Um, and then, then if you look down, it's what we do is we connect each of those findings from a study to a category. Um, and categories are things that we created after about six months of work. So we, we basically worked about six months just collecting studies and collecting findings. Uh, then we had a retreat, um, and we sat down, and Beth guided us in this process. She's pretty far away from the, 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 uh, the, the microphone, but maybe she'll speak now when we do this. We, we basically got together as a large group and took all of these findings, which was in the hundreds of findings across studies. And what did we do? What did we, get? What did we call it? It's well, we just tried to start putting them in buckets, in conceptual buckets, and um, what we found was everybody called things different, and they were just all over the place. And so, uh, after rounds and rounds of discussion, we started putting them in, into clusters, I guess, um, and then grouping them in larger buckets. We, we ended up with quite an array of categories and subcategories. Do you want to talk about? Yeah, if you go down to overview, Melissa, on categories, uh, you know, we have the, mm -hmm. there's a chart. So, so <laughs> these are the the, um, the sort of seven basic areas uh, that is in these studies. Do these findings relate to the teacher educators, or do they relate to the pre-service teacher educators? And if it happened that they related to both, they would get checked and linked. Uh, coursework is something that comes up a lot. Field work, program structure and organization, program effects upon completion and into teaching. That's a very small set of studies. Uh, content or process findings related to a focus for research. Um, so what we did, if you'll look on that, and this is on your handout as well, um, we basically ended up with sort of a decision tree in terms of looking at a finding and deciding along the path of where, what does the, who does the finding relate to, what context does it find work in, that's important to the study, are there outcome variables, and then what topic does the finding relate to, and is it important. So that's area seven, if you slide up a little bit, just a little bit, Melissa, those are the, the, these are the topical areas that seem to appear again and again inside of these studies. So, so we have a set of studies that keep coming around this topic of adolescent literacy, assessment, children's literature, critical literacy. Um, absolutely. Just that it's the intersection of this topic and teacher education. Absolutely. So I just initial pre service teacher education. Right. right. So it's initial pre service teacher education in the area of adolescent literacy. Initial to pre service teacher education in content area literacy. Exactly. So we should have that. Yeah, that's the. the STEM but leads all of those. Um, and in, in our linking, a particular finding can link in a lot of different places. And again, our, our process has always been generous. That is, if you think it relates to children's literature, or even the, or if you think it connects to what we're going to you know, this is going to talk about just responsive pedagogy, the culturally responsive pedagogy, but they don't use that exact term, go ahead and link it. Well, right now, just go ahead and link it to that category or to that topic. 
has some sort of standard notion to what you're asking for some extensions of that. If you slide on down the list of the overview, uh, let's, yeah. let's just pause okay. for one second because Greg's saying that because this is showing what we see when we put things in and not what they would see when they look at it, he has, he's, he's yeah, take the permalink up top, um, which would be the, you know, it's like a post preview. Copy that into a new browser window and um, post that so people can see the live view. Oh, I guess you can't yet. Yeah, I guess you can't yet. Okay. The front end is not built yet. Oh, I see. But this is what someone would. They would, they would come to something. Well, let's see, are we still on the, we're on the second one, area focus? Yeah, so, so what we said here was that this particular census is sort of lumped into four areas in terms of the ways in which people were focusing the research on, on tutoring. Uh, some of those focused on outcomes, some of them focused on the structure of the design of the tutorial, some on pre-service teacher learning outcomes long-term rather than short-term, and then a look at mediating factors, and and then finally sort of student learning outcomes where they included that. And so then we usually create a chart that's a little bit further down. Well, that talks about each of those four areas and sort of synthesizes that. Um, then the tutoring graphs, if we can just take a look at. It's not actually in the site yet. It's just a, so it just downloaded it. Oh, it downloaded it? Yeah. Basically, these are graphics. So in these graphics, you will see things like uh, the, the studies published over a particular span of years, how many studies were published from 2001 through 2015, uh, and, sort of, and it also identified the journals that have been publishing the tutoring research. It identifies, uh, we've got a chart in there on the inside or outside of perspectives. So we'll try to begin to create these graphics that will sort of represent that literature broadly. Um, and we'll be displaying those entire inside of what you see. Is it moving, is it moving forward? It's just sharing the yeah. browser, not, uh, not the whole screen. Yeah. So the, the last part there is the summary moving forward, and this is the sort of so what kind of statement that comes around to literature review of this area. Uh, raises questions, points out where we seem to be having some consensus, areas where there seems to be differences or more study, more work needed. And then on the very bottom of that page uh, is going to come uh, comments. So this is just the beginning of what it's going to look like in terms of that that space for us to interact around this synthesis. Uh, so people can come in and say, well, there's three chapters here. Uh, Jan Richards has his book on tutoring. So different people could come and suggest additional resources that people might want to go to. They might identify additional studies. They might question some of the interpretations. And our goal would be to make that interactive with us and within the community. So, tutoring is pretty far along. Can we talk? What do you want to just a couple of seconds talking about some of these? Yeah, we could talk about article tags. Is it right there? Okay, let's do that. So, article tags is, is something new that we're adding to the system. Um, and this came out of a result of we're seeing patterns in the studies that we're looking at. It's, it's, it has enough work. Um, we're seeing patterns inside the, stu the studies that are not being captured by are topical areas. So for, let me give an example that many people can mention. And that is communities of practice. That shows up again and again and again inside of the studies. So what we're doing as we're entering studies now is we're beginning to create this yes, tag list. A point. Uh, yeah. The tag list will be of common words that are that may will, will be inclusive of our topical areas, but may reach outside of our topical areas as well. So that tag list will actually be searchable as well. So if you would say, well, I'm really interested in writing about it, writing about it using it as a framework in their research, you can go to this tag page, click on 
community as a practice, and it will pull up all of the articles all right, that have been tagged with that particular. Uh, so potentially, that might become a topical area that someone would want to take up into a synthesis and move into science. To the user, to somebody in the world, not one of us necessarily. Any user might decide to write the, uh, a, a, one of the similar kinds of lit review on community practices and education. And one of the things that we said in the, and we'll then, as I'm looking at the clock, uh, one of the things that we've been saying is that that is potentially one sort of evolving role for the editorial board. That the editorial board, we're going to ask you as we move forward a couple of things. One of those is going to be to review, to actually do a review of these sentences before they get posted. Uh, so kind of a traditional journal sort of a, uh, editorial board review, and we'll revise based on that, and we're not going to put anything up there that hasn't passed uh, that review process. Um, but we're also seeing the, the potential for the board also being involved in the interactive work around these areas, so board members may choose a couple of the topical areas that they're interested in and stay active in both commenting and responding to comments that are part of the site system. But also eventually moving to a point where a board member may say, you know, that particular topical area has not been synthesized yet. I have a group that would like to do that. Uh, and what we would do is we're trying to build that process where you could interact with the system as well and begin to contribute these authored uh, synthesis statements around either the topical areas that exist or maybe one of our tag areas that needs to be expanded. Can I ask you a quick question? How would you handle um, people who are going at their literature review from a specific theoretical perspective? Like they want to look at tutoring, but they only want to take a you know an activity theory lens or something, where somebody else might want to look at it from a different way, which obviously would influence their conclusions. How could we handle multiple perspectives around different reviews? Tag. I mean, activity theory could be a tag, uh, and if somebody, um, uh, I mean, users. We'll either be able to, we, don't, we haven't figured out exactly what, the, as we said, what the front end looks like, but users could tag or could uh, uh, write to us and, and a request or suggest. Wow, that sounds awesome. Thanks. So that's, that tag is really going to be an important place for people suggesting additional tags for audience. The other cuts through the literature. And um, a, a, another thing that's, that's, uh, uh, that, that, that we should say, when we were just looking at sort of scrolling through that text, of the, uh, uh, the, the sort of lit review about tutoring, uh, we went through focus area one, focus area two, focus area three, but those are going to be in the individual pages that will be hyperlinked together. So these we're trying to figure out how to make the text a hypertext enough so that there are different pathways of navigation across these categories uh, uh, and uh, the, the, you know that open up the text in the way that hypertext can do. So. We're, so we're, you know, we're, we're trying to figure out how to fragment it. So it's not like you're downloading a PDF of a traditional print, print culture lit review, but it, uh, but it is more of a, a digital type of text. And these syntheses will be updated every, hopefully every year. As new studies get added going forward and back, they'll be updated and the, the comments will be incorporated into the revised syntheses. We'll archive the old syntheses so that they're still there and available. But, but these will keep changing as the literature goes. Now, we picked tutoring, but for LRA, um, we've identified several areas that by LRA we want to be ready to present around, and some of them have been a little more straightforward than others. I know, Melissa, is, uh, Melissa do you want to talk about yeah, that? Yeah, talk about my, So my area is cultural, culturally responsive um, instruction or pedagogy and pre-service teacher preparation, and it intersects in um, pretty significant ways with other groups of studies like working with students of color, teaching for social justice, um, and beliefs, pre-service teacher beliefs. So right now, what my group is trying to do is to decide which articles um, to include in that group. Because um, what, we're, what we're running into is that um, somebody may use the words culturally responsive pedagogy or use one of the theorists that we associate strongly with those terms. Um, and so that, those pieces go into that bucket, but there might be pieces that um, address very much the same problems of practice and preparing pre-service teachers, but they use uh, Sleater and Grant, you know, who, um, who talk more about teaching for social justice, so they use a multicultural teacher preparation lens. So the question is how, whether to write a synthesis, whether culturally responsive instruction is the thing to write a synthesis about, 
or whether the theme to write a synthesis about is actually preparing teachers to work with students in linguistically and culturally diverse contexts in responsive ways or something like that. So it points us back to you know, every time we put something into a category or a bucket, we're making a choice about what to include or exclude. exclude. And at different points around, along the way, we're finding we need to stop and ask whether those were the right um, words to choose to describe this group of things that we're talking about. So it's been kind of fun to, to read through and to wrestle, through, wrestle with these different terms that different people use and to really get a handle on what it is that we're wondering about these groups of teacher education. And that is this idea of preparing teachers in responsive ways. Yeah, well, I so I'm working on the one that the category, the topics that that is entitled dialogic or discussion approaches, and so the ones that were put in this bucket, um, in theory, were <laughs> the studies that um, intent focus on um, how to facilitate discussion once you're in out of the classroom. So teacher ed programs that take as a focus discussion-based approaches. And there were, I think we started with like 26 articles that were attached to that um, category. And when we actually looked at them, we ended up disconnecting two thirds of them uh, because there were many studies that used dialogic approaches inside teacher education settings that's not really what they were focused on teaching about. Um, and then we, we ended up with eight, I think maybe nine studies that really focus on these are these are programs or courses that really focus on what does it mean to um, teach someone about discussion and facilitating discussion. So what's surprising to me about that is how little there is actually that focuses on that at the teacher ed level and almost exclusively um, secondary. Okay. Um, so I, I, I'm working with a group on uh, on research, teacher, research and teacher education for writing, and uh, and uh, a couple of interesting things that have come up about that. Uh, some people may be aware of the lit review that Denise Morgan and colleagues wrote um, uh, a few years ago, and so we really leaned on that uh, that lit review to, to make sure that the things that we had identified in the site database. Where all uh, all the stuff that Denise and, and, and her colleagues had found, that we had included all of those things. Most of them we had. We had some that they, they hadn't found, um, but there were things that we needed to add uh, to our to our database. Um, so that was that, that was one um, uh, uh, interesting thing was how to how to incorporate the work of a lit review that has happened recently within the uh, review period that we're dealing with, um, and then. Uh, of course, they're, they're like in all of these categories, there are categorical issues, things that should, you know, we ask, should this be in this category? Not all the writing is much more straightforward than something like dialogue or cultural responsive uh, uh, instruction. Um, and um, uh, as you, as you, I mean, it's not, not surprisingly what we, what we, a lot of what we have are people working on uh, a, a teacher ed students' conceptions of what writing is and their attitudes toward writing. That's a whole lot of the, um, of the literature on teacher ed and writing, which really sort of points to, points to the field noticing that people, by the time they arrive at teacher education, have a bad attitude toward writing and, a, um, and misconceptions about writing that they want to address. And so there's kind of an implicit uh, finding across those studies that there's a, a, a critique that the field makes of how writing has been uh, built as a concept in, in people's lives as they move through 17 years of schooling. It's weird that you get to uh, that you get to the senior year in college and, and people think they have to teach them how to write starting back um, uh, when they've had 17 years of writing uh, writing work. So so there's a, so but that's not the finding of any particular study. That's sort of like underneath the assumptions of the whole, of a large chunk, chunk of the field that's been uh, undertaking these studies. And this is in the discussion too. That's um, yeah. a lot of the findings related to what their experiences have been and understandings about discussion in all the classrooms. And, and sort of teaching through that or disrupting that. Or, you know, so it's, it's the interesting thing it's, a, it's the teacher ed form reform. Mary Kennedy talks about teacher ed form reform agendas in literacy education, where the where, where literacy educators, literacy teacher educators don't think it's been done right in the school, 
and so have to teach people how to do it right in the future, but teach people who haven't had those experiences in school to do it differently. I mean, that's a lot of teacher education, math, math, math and other areas as well, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's an interesting thing to, to sort of find beneath the surface of a lot of, of these things. And you have a pretty large data set. It's about 40, uh, uh, about 40 studies. We've found a few more lately uh, from, the, from the studies we have. We've had to add some, so we've got maybe uh, it's gone down with something we just confirmed and then back up, so it's a little over four. And so Diane Diane's working on the reading process. Uh, reading processes. Um, we have no, I don't have to say much because I haven't done much, okay. but it is probably the most um, straightforward, uh, standard kind of um, area because, and, and there are quite a few articles on how to teach the basic processes of reading. So uh, we're we're looking at vocabulary, uh, and awareness, and the basic processes of reading, yeah. how to teach future teachers how to teach those things. So. And we have several people that are offsite. We have a few, uh, one who's doing a, uh, one group that's doing a synthesis on drama research, drama and increasing drama and literacy. Uh, teacher preparation. We've got another group that's working in secondary, and uh, that's split to uh, one. Uh, they've, they've split. This is Michelle Fowler and Mato is, is, is been this group. They've split um, into an English education uh, 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 strand and an, an adolescent literacy strand as a, a, a separate thing. And there, of course, is, is literacy and content areas uh, separate for those adolescent literacy and those understanding the literacies in adolescents' lives. Um, uh, the English education, how can teachers of English. How to do literacy work in teachers with teacher English. And there's a group working on learning disabilities and preparing teachers to work with students who have been identified with learning disabilities as well. So, so those are kind of our active groups that are working on this synthesis, and our target is for LRA to have had those both completed, out to the editorial board for review, revised, and then put up onto the system, and that LRA, LRA session we feel like will have the system pretty much up and ready to go. Um, and, and ready to be interactive uh, and beginning to engage those features that really are the most exciting part of uh, the work with them. So I think that. Um, what else do we I do have sort of going forward questions, but we've only got one minute left. Um, so possible for your roles in terms of editorial board members um, will certainly be to review these pieces. So that, that that's a process that we're going to begin to initiate. And, you may be hearing from us soon as these first drafts get developed uh, to help us with that review process. Uh, we are eventually going to ask you to get involved in terms of the inactive features of site as well. And then ultimately down the line, our, our hope would be that you begin to think about ways in which you could take on and begin to do some, some of these synthesis work as well. Um, that's still to be sort of figured out how we'll do that. But we think, again, that's expanding the community uh, inside this way of thinking about literature reviews that are dynamic. Um, as most of you have done literature reviews and you publish them and they're already old when they get published and, and we never get to sort of continue to use them in ways that uh, will be valuable for the field and valuable for, for you know all of the kind of policy sort of swirls that go on around us in teacher preparation. So, okay. If we get most of our goals to do that. We asked if they had any questions, and I don't see any. No questions. That's not a good sign. Thanks. Also, if people have questions for the front end of the site. So as you're thinking about a, being a user, if you have suggestions for what kinds of things or pathways of access you would like to see in the front end, that's something that we will be just to go forward. Although it must be a little hard to respond back when you don't have anything to see yet, but, um, but, but when, your, once your mind starts spinning this way, you right, you can start to see where you might want certain kinds of features. And, that, and, and surely, once we have it set up and you give us feedback in the early months and the first year or so, it'll be easy to change it without causing everyone to go through culture shifts and it all angry because the site is changed. Um, but 
that's what we're finding. I kind of think that surprises just uh, in closing the, just the idea of um, the number of international studies that we have and the studies that I am really amazed at that. I'm amazed at the number of different journals that are publishing um, literacy research and a little amazed at some of our leading journals in the field of reading particularly are sorely absent <laughs> in terms of the representation of a lot of the um, literacy teaching research. Uh, so, so I think that's 